Thank you. I'll uh, start off by saying a big thank you to Mr. Chandra for being here in Chennai and most importantly enlightening us with this nice speech. A lot to learn. And uh, thank you to United Way and all the board members for uh, having us here. Uh, it's, it's a brilliant demonstration of what a lot of little bit of dedication and commitment can do. So Mr. Chandra, let me start off with uh, one of the questions which I'm sure comes to everybody's mind in the audience. So when we look at you, we look at durability, right? You started out as a professional, a young professional, Tata Motors, TCS, across the board, and now Tata Sons. When you look at Tata Group, started out in 1868, and now pretty much over the last you know, 150 years practically, been in every business, supported the country in a big way. So one word for us all, when we think of both you and the group, is durability. And what's the culture which drives that? How, how do you make this entire structure so durable? See, I have been uh, extremely fortunate uh, to join the group and uh, blessed to be where I am. I think um, what has been built by the, built as a culture in the group has been done by stalwarts. And whether it is Jamshedji, JRD and other chairman and Ms. Ratan Tata, I think they have created a DNA for the group which basically earns public trust. And we can say many, many, many things. None of them can match to the trust that has been established by the group. And for that, the group always looks every issue holistically. It's never a financial decision alone. Yes, financial decision is very important. But the stakeholder view and what is good for the society long term, not immediate term, I think I, I cannot just explain how this happens, but this has been very deeply embedded. I don't have to ask anyone to do the right thing. Imagine. Imagine what an opportunity. You don't have to tell anyone, be careful, do the right thing. They do it naturally. <laughs> I mean, that's a big change management burden taken off you. No, I think, uh, so I, just listening to you, I think it's you know, one of those rare occasions where we can say, Big but popular, right? So it's, it's you know, sometimes it, it's a contradiction in its own way. Uh, just listening to you again, I think digitization seems to be a big theme uh, which you kind of uh, have planned. And when I think of uh, digitization and all the new initiatives you planned, whether it's the super app, uh, I think it's called Tata New, uh, whether it's the acquisition of some of the big uh, consumer-facing companies like Big Basket, 1MG, uh, I hear a, a term comes to my mind, elephants can dance. Uh, so in some ways, uh, we, we look at Tata as one big elephant. And at the same point of time, it seems to have the flexibility to be, to be able to adapt to all these new trends. So where does digitization really fit for you? And how do you kind of get integrated with, the, with contrasted businesses like steel, power? How does it all come together? So I think, you know, the concept of digital is there for everybody. It's there for private companies, public companies. It's there for um, uh, industri industrial companies. It's there for services companies. It's there for B2B companies. It's there for B2C companies. It's equally important for public companies. I mean, India has some of the best uh, platforms. We have the passport platforms. We have the Aadhaar. And we have the uh, payment platforms. I mean, what we have built is just enormous, which is transforming this country. And that's the foundation on which a lot of things will happen going forward. So to my mind, as I said, it is all about, uh, I always uh, tell my people, the whole process, engineering, I think it's, uh, Maha probably knows, he reads a lot more than I do, but is it Gary Hamill who wrote, I think, 1991? So it started and then people keep doing process. I think process is a night job. If you have not done it, it's a problem, just do it in the night. Now you do data at daytime. So every company should have focus on data. If a process is weak, even today, then you have to do it as an extra job. 
I think data is so critical and everybody has to look at what data they have access to, what data they want. The analytics that you can do can drive machine performance, can uh, ecosystem performance, so many things, product performance. Every design has to be based on data. Everything can be customized. You take a steel company, why should the steel company make the same, same type of steel for everybody? And we, we will have differentiation. Yes, we say this is auto steel, this is uh, for construction and so on and so on. But it can get a lot more personalized for industries with data. Many things can be done real time. So it will all happen. It will take time, but it will all happen. We are going to see in heavy industries also uh, adopting technology. With all the, everything will get integrated. Your customer's data will get integrated with your data. So I think digital, digital for me is everywhere. It's not only for um, consumer facing companies. It's for everybody because machine performance is all data again. And your customer performance is all data again. Interesting, sir. So can we dream of a Tata super app where everything from hotels, airlines, coffee, grocery, uh, so already media is writing a lot, so I better <laughs> keep quiet on this one. Yeah, but we'll be launching it soon. And uh, our idea is to bring together the power of the group. And also at the same time, it'll be open architecture. Um, so at some point in time, it'll become more open. But our idea is to bring uh, everything together. We are, uh, I think we have put together a very good value proposition. But... Obviously, these kind of apps, you know, you need to launch, you need to get the response, get feedback, you need to do all of that. But uh, I, think, I think we are pretty bullish about, about the app. We'll be launching soon. Mr. Chandra, you, you've written, co-authored a book uh, along with Rupa Purushottam called Digital Nation. Uh, any, any two or three big thoughts from the book from an India perspective, which you would kind of... So, book is totally about India only. Yeah. It is only about solving the access and jobs problem. That's the only core theme of the book, um, is we try to show how um, it can fix healthcare, how it can fix education, how it can fix um, SMEs. Um, the whole idea is about uh, how by fixing... Uh, access problem, you create a market. See, many times people in the West talk about digital, digitalization and digitalization, how it will take jobs away. But actually, in the, on the contrary, in India, it will open new markets. Because a vast majority of the people don't have access to the market because uh, of the nature uh, of our, of our, of our uh, country. So I, I feel that if you fix that problem, you provide the access, you will not only create jobs, you will create a huge unaddressed economy. Um, in every sector. And my last question may be on digitization. Uh, you know, obviously groups like Tata and especially forward-looking groups like Tata have the, have a huge access to a client base. Would you need or do you envisage the burn model which a lot of new age tech firms have adopted and uh, have had partnerships with multiple set of private equity firms? Do you see the group going that way at all or do you think you'll be able to get both together in a very unique way, uh, the technology as well as the existing client base you have. In the consumer or? In the consumer side, without, without necessarily needing to burn the capital which a lot I of others you should watch. You should watch because you seem to be overhearing what I'm talking to my team. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so fundamentally, I uh, am a little bit old fashioned. I, uh, I agree with the old, uh, the new tech and everything else. Everyone has to have visibility to cash flows at some point. I don't believe that you can build businesses without visibility to cash flows. There has to be, you have to see it somewhere. Need not be next year, need not be in a couple of years, but you've got to, you've got to have a model. Otherwise, I, I don't think any model can survive. Got it, sir. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was to look at the next decade for Tata as a group, um, where do you think really things kind of fit in? Uh, can we imagine another TCS in the making over the next 10 years? If yes, where do you think, in which sector is it most likely? See, I think it's a, it's a question of doing the right thing. We are building lots of companies. Now actually our uh, auto business, we are transforming big time. Um, even 
we call it steel, but I will call it material. We'll play big in materials. Um, we uh, definitely uh, are making big bets in renewable energy. Uh, we will have a high-tech company in, uh, in semiconductors. We are building a um, technology company in uh, next generation. Currently, it's 5G, but next generation of mobile and wireless and other technologies. Um, we will get into EV battery manufacturing. We are currently doing the planning because everything is concentrated in China and there's going to be a huge demand, huge demand. So we are committing a lot of capital to build a lot of these businesses and we've got to make R&D work, which is my dream project now. Um, uh, uh, or somebody will say it's a, it's a big challenge. Um, yes, it is a big challenge, but uh, I definitely believe that a um, couple of words on Air India. I think Air India will still always remain for me a national airline. I don't see it as just right for Tata's. Um, we may own it, but it will still be national airline. A country of our size has to have a very um, strong a sense of pride for every everyone. So we definitely want to make it the best airline. Uh, it's going to be a lot of hard work but we'll bring in the best of technology. We want to have the best in-flight experience. We, we, we want the, ex the journey, customer journey, from the point they have to think about travel to they arrive wherever they have to arrive. We want to think, think through the entire, entire chain. We have lots of thoughts. Um, and as I'm speaking, the oil price is going up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yes, it is a bet, but... Uh, I think I think we are going to we are, we are going to give it give it everything we have to give it to make it work. So so do you look at Air India as a tough decision or no? A it's a, it's a naturally the right decision. For me, I was very clear from day one. I'm glad I got the support of the board and and Mr. Tata was fully behind me. So 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 it's fine. I think I think we we bid also prudently. So. And sir, from an Air India perspective... See, everything, I also believe in capital allocation, but everything cannot be uh, down to just financial decision making. Yes, we've got to make it financially work, otherwise we cannot get a great airline. But sometimes you take decisions which are important. No, no absolutely. And I think uh, everybody here will be super excited to see a new avatar of Air India. I think uh, all of us have kind of at least enjoyed the luxury of Vistara over the last five to six years and hopefully it will translate into a similar feeling for Air India. So on the, uh, on the electric vehicle side, uh, you know, that's something which the group has been spending a lot of time, energy and pot potentially resources. Uh, obviously that's a big area of growth. Uh, how do you see that shaping up over the next decade? So we are pretty aggressive. We uh, decided in uh, 2018 September, I think we are going to pivot to electric vehicles. That's the way uh, that we are going to focus on passenger cars. Uh, so we formed a small team to come up with the first electric vehicle very quickly. Um, I think we are investing heavily and we are, that's why we are getting into batteries. We'll be getting into uh, putting the charging network across the nation. So it's a big bet for us and we feel very, very positive. Currently we are, um, we are doing very well. We are, uh, I think our economics also is doing well and our uh, um, acceptability is quite good. We get a lot of support from customers. Um, so we are working on skateboard platforms. So I think it's a big bit for us. And, uh, you know, just kind of uh, moving away a bit from, uh, uh, from, from business for a couple of minutes. I think Tata's response to the entire COVID situation over the last 24 months has also been exemplary. I think uh, one of the few incidents which stand out is the entire hospital set up in Kerala. Any any specific thoughts? How, how did the war room kind of really step up in those 24 I months? I think uh, the good thing is these are things that happen naturally. I think when this whole uh, COVID situation came, I remember I got a call from Mr. Tata and I went and saw him. He said, we got to do something immediately. Then immediately we put up some amount. We said we have to do this and we committed that and, but the entire group rallied together. I think every company did um, so much from, uh, and we, we had a, we had a uh, 
meeting of 20 CEOs. Uh, we were running calls every day. At the peak, we were running calls every day at a fixed time. And uh, we did whatever was needed. First it was PPE, then it was ventilator. We had to manufacture ventilator. I remember calling the CEO, Omar of uh, Medtronic. I said, boss, we need to ma manufacture a ventilator. Can you give us a license yeah. for, uh, for, for this ventilator? He said, let me call back, call you back. And he called back in 24 hours to say that, okay, we'll give you license. So we went ahead and started to manufacture the ventilator, but then there was no need for the ventilator. So then we kind of put that project on hold. Then we got on to um, hospitals. Uh, we created many hospitals. We created uh, quarantine centers. We created uh, emergency response centers expanded the hospitals in all the cities where we were asked to do by the government, uh, wherever the demand was. And we were directed by the government also because they were monitoring the overall numbers. So it also became useful. Uh, at one point in time, Tata Steel, Tata Steel was produ producing um, uh, oxygen, increased the oxygen capacity by 10 times. Uh, to, and they produced 10% of the medical oxygen requirements for the country. It was quite uh, disturbing because I used to get calls from so many people. People, some of the hospital, I don't want to name, uh, very senior people who run hospitals used to call and then say, please do something, otherwise we'll lose 100 people in the, before the end of the day. So it was a very, very difficult time to just listen to these stories, but I'm very proud of, uh, again, it was all there. People rallied, people, you don't, you didn't have to, you didn't have to actually do much to ask people to do. People were on the, on the field. They wanted to do. And uh, Indian hotels took so much risk. I mean, they converted hospitals. They were the first ones to convert many of their hotels into hospital beds. And they lost a lot of, actually uh, we had good number of deaths in uh, Indian hotels, primarily because they were in the front line. And it's just, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you don't know what to say, how to thank, how to thank, how to react, because it's all happening on the fly. So I'm, as I said, I think it's a very unique group. It's a great privilege. Great, sir. Thanks a lot for that contribution. <laughs> and another topic I know for a fact you are extremely passionate about is the entire climate change piece. And I think uh, it's, it's fair to say that uh, you know, you mentioned it in your talk also. It's like it's like a, it's like two trains running in opposite, who are supposed to run in uh, opposite directions. They're pretty much running towards colliding with each other. How how do you think us as a race, us as corporates, and more importantly us as individuals can do something about it? First, uh, first, uh, I would uh, just compliment the government and especially the prime minister for setting the 2070 target. It's a pretty bold target, but I think. Um, it had to be done. Um, but I think the corporates, we should take much more aggressive targets. Uh, we have worked out our detailed plan. We have a very comprehensive plan for all companies except airlines. And our targets are very aggressive. Uh, we, have, we have not published it yet because didn't want to do it during the pandemic. Now we'll go through all our boards and sometime in the next few months, we'll be out. Uh, we have specific uh, dates. We have got goals for every year. Um, not, not some, by this year, we will be carbon neutral. Um, I feel that this is an opportunity. People should see what we can do by getting into this as opposed to uh, a spreadsheet which says that it's going to cost me so much money. So I think corporates have to move and they will be forced to move. I, I can tell you that uh, there will be a time, then it will become too late for them to change gears. And some companies will fall aside because they are not boarding the train. But, but and do, you see, do you see a paradox here? Because the group has you know, exposure to businesses like steel, power, uh, you know, some businesses which kind of by, by the very nature of business, they are kind of not necessarily the easiest from a climate change perspective. How do you manage that balance? So there are companies in which, for example, um, 
Tata Power has given me a very aggressive target. By 2030, the goals they have given are just fantastic. They will achieve, achieve it faster. And the JLR has already given 2039. And, but 65% of JLR costs will be... Well, I don't think there is a paradox. It has to be done. Yes, steel is going to be difficult. In steel, we will go up on carbon and come down. Our um, capacity will continue to increase in blast furnace until another seven, eight years. Uh, because that is the time it will take for us to figure out um, to replace the blast furnace coal with hydrogen. And then once we do that, we will do it faster. So we have taken into account um, a journey that each company has to go through. Some companies will straight away achieve this on a path and, um, and accelerate. Uh, because they have an alternative growth model, some companies like steel will have to go through a different cycle. We have taken that into account. So, so it's horses for courses. Makes sense, sir. Uh, now again, uh, something which I know you're individually, personally passionate about also, and the groups also spend a lot of time, uh, CSR. How do, you, how do you see that shaping up in the country? I think both, uh, you know, just it's, it's, I don't want to just define it as corporate social responsibility, but it needs to come from the heart individually. I think it was just fascinating to uh, hear the stories uh, when uh, the awards were given out. So I think these are a lot of things happening. And I think what really uh, gives me a big uh, belief is that the younger generation today do not want to work for companies which do not have a social purpose. If you want to write talent, if you want to get good people to work for you, they want to participate in the social purpose. So this will become a movement. I am, I think, I think the movement is there. Every company is doing it in some form. And there are lacunae. And uh, like, like what was said earlier, that every part of the country is not getting what it should get. But all these things will, it's a journey. I think, uh, so there will be a mass movement. So it's not about money. I fundamentally believe for the right cause, money is always available. I never believe that money is a problem. Money is always available. It's just the attitude. If you have the attitude on the right cause, I think uh, things happen. Money comes from somewhere. Again, it was all there. People rally, people, you don't, you didn't have to, you didn't have to actually do much to ask people to do. People were on the, on the field. They wanted to do. And uh, Indian hotels took so much risk. I mean, they converted a hospital. They were the first ones to convert many of their hotels into hospital beds. Uh, they lost a lot of... Actually, we had a good number of deaths in uh, Indian hotels, primarily because they were in the front line. And it's just, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you don't know what to say, how to thank, how to thank, how to react, because it's all happening on the fly. So, I'm, as I said, I think it's a very unique group. It's a great privilege. Great, sir. Thanks a lot for your contribution. And another topic I know for a fact you are extremely passionate about is the impact climate change piece. And I think uh, it's, it's fair to say that I know you mentioned it in your talk also. It's like it's like a, it's like two trains running in opposite who's supposed to run in uh, opposite directions. They're pretty much running towards colliding with each other. How, how do you think us as a race, us as corporates? And more importantly, us as individuals can do something about it. First, uh, first uh, I would uh, just compliment the government and especially the Prime Minister for setting the 2070 target. It's a pretty bold target, but I think um, it had to be done. Uh, but I think the corporates, we should take much more aggressive targets. Uh, we have worked out our detailed plan. We have a very comprehensive plan for all companies except airlines. And our targets are very aggressive. Uh, we have we have not published it yet because we didn't want to do it during the pandemic. Now we will go through all our boards and sometime in the next few months we will be out. Uh, we have specific uh, dates. We have got goals for every year. Uh, not 
not some by this year we will be carbon neutral. Um, I feel that this is an opportunity. People should see what we can do by getting into this as opposed to uh, a spreadsheet which says that it's going to cost me so much money. So I think corporates have to move and they will be forced to move. I, I can tell you that uh, there will be a time then it will become too late for them to change gears. And some companies will fall aside because they are not boarding the train. Well, but do you see do you see a paradox here? Because the group has you know exposure to businesses like steel, power, uh, you know, some businesses which kind of by by the very nature of the business they are kind of not necessarily the easiest for a climate change perspective. How do you manage that balance? So there are companies in which, for example, um, Tata Power has given me a very aggressive target. By 2030, the goals they have given are just fantastic. They will achieve, achieve it faster. And JLR has already given 2039. And, but 65% of JLR cars will be uh, electric, including the Land Rover by 2030. So uh, we have goals for different companies and a lot of details have been worked out in each company. I don't think there is a paradox, it has to be done. Yes, yeah, steel is going to be difficult. In steel, we will go up on carbon and come down. Our uh, capacity will continue to increase in blast furnace until another seven, eight years. Uh, because that is the time it will take for us to figure out um, to replace the blast furnace coal with hydrogen. And then once we do that, we will do it faster. So we have taken into account uh, a journey that each company has to go through. Some companies will straight away achieve this on a path and, um, and accelerate. Uh, because they have an alternative growth model, some companies like steel will have to go through a different cycle. We have taken that into account. So, so it's half for courses. Makes sense, sir. Uh, now again, uh, something which I know you are individually, personally passionate about also and the groups also spend a lot of time, uh, CSR, how do, you, how do you see that shaping up in the country? I think both, uh, you know, just it's, it's, I don't want to just define it as corporate social responsibility, but it needs to come from the heart individually. I think it was just fascinating to uh, hear the stories uh, when uh, the awards were given out. So I think these are a lot of things happening and I think what really uh, gives me a big uh, belief is that the younger generation today do not want to work for companies which do not have a social purpose. If you want the right talent, if you want to get good people to work for you, they want to participate in the social purpose. So this will become a moment. And I think, I think the movement is there, every company is doing it in some form and there are lacunae and uh, like, like what was said earlier that every part of the country is not getting what it should get. But all these things, will, it's a journey. I think, uh, so there will be a mass movement. So it's not about money. I fundamentally believe for the right cause money is always a thing. I never believe that money is a problem. Money is always a thing. It's just the attitude. If you have the attitude on the right cause, I think uh, things happen. Money comes from somewhere. Absolutely, sir. Uh, I'm just, just kind of wanting to look ahead a bit. And, you know, in some senses, uh, you know, one phrase which comes to my mind is like the group who saw tomorrow or the man who saw tomorrow. The group who saw tomorrow, right? So Nostradamus was a famous... Uh, uh, astrologer or whatever, foreteller who wrote this book, The Man Who Saw Tomorrow. I'm just thinking Tara group in many ways is like the group who saw tomorrow. And since we have your wisdom here, uh, you know, as businesses, if there were three broad sectors or two broad sectors, uh, you suggest we all can focus in over the next decade. Uh, what do you think it would be? I'm not, I'm not a Nostradamus, so I can never tell you that. I think, um, see, as I said, there is, uh, there is so much to be done in India. I am actually, we are focusing a lot in India 
okay though i entire my tcs days um, i used to travel 200 days international all my time i was spending only internationally i hardly did um, any except for some projects like the passport and income tax and all that the government projects and stock exchange projects 95% of my time i was only focused on international but now i'm so much looking at india because of the presence of the group i think there is so much opportunity so uh, you can't pick one sector there is opportunity everywhere i think uh, it's about bringing a new way of building a building a sector how do you bring technology from day one so even in our india my opportunity and my fear my opportunity is that we got to start as we are rebuilding we have some time we can't change everything overnight it's not going to happen next month next new york flight you are not going to see a change but we got to make it in some finite time but we have got to start with a different approach to technology if we start building the same thing then we won't be differentiated so every sector presents so much opportunity and we need to really bring uh, technology and look at a new way of doing things and i believe sme sector is the most untapped sector in this country it's a huge huge sector i think without the sme succeeding we have no hope we have to create 100 million jobs the next 10 years 1 million a job month it's not going to happen without without sme is doing it how much it sector may be doing 20 million jobs auto sector can do 40 million jobs today currently and how many big companies can create those scale so i think we need to create a lot of companies smes are all one one out of jobs today they must be creating average size of an sme is one one out of jobs one, one, one to one out of jobs they do minimum having 10 jobs they must be giving jobs and how do we empower them how do we give them finances and lot has to be done and that sector can i feel, we, we also talk about it in the book how do you create clusters like bengaluru startup means bengaluru but i think every sector has to have a startup ecosystem it can happen in textiles it can happen in auto manufacturing it can happen in semiconductors it can happen in every sector in which we are building companies there will be a a kind of a startup cluster that has to come in different parts of the country and that's with that 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 will bring uh, equality that will bring jobs and it's doable and financing is going to be key okay god so that's an extremely interesting thought um maybe a last couple of uh, questions from my side so just just coming to this uh, this individual mr chandra so i'm going to kind of uh, come back to a little bit of you as an individual right so uh, you you've been a proud recipient i think of the padma bhushan award from the prime minister for trade uh, you've been a professional entrepreneur in your own avatar uh, starting out uh, in in tata group as in uh, uh, in a very early age uh, you've also developed a lot of hobbies photography being one of them and you're an avid avid runner uh, you know i just heard you talk about the fact that you want to now finish the full marathon in uh, less than 4 hours <laughs> you have to finish it in less than 4 hours <laughs> and most importantly uh, you know what struck me was saying you ensure that you work out 10 times a week uh, so it, it it kind of so how do you look at this balance how do you kind of balance uh, balance all these things together with work i for one personally struggle a lot and would love to listen to how you can kind of Uh, get an equal balance between all of these passions on one side business requirements on the other and fitness on the third i i i can't answer this question so easily <laughs> but i think i just make it as a priority i mean if uh, having a shower and having a breakfast is a priority and i just make workout a priority i just do the workout first then decide how much time is left for the work <laughs> So is it that simple it is that simple <laughs> it is that simple see there is a there is a there is a book i am just reading somebody gifted to me um two weeks ago i have not fully read the book i just flipped through most books that's what i do it's about when you are uh, when you are in your uh, somewhere in your middle age or 
whatever time, it's not the age at least, if you want to bring a new habit, which you have not done it for so long, you don't put restrictions on how much time you have to do. People say that I have to walk 45 minutes a day. I think it's a wrong place to start. So if you can walk with the shoes five minutes, that's okay. So the book basically says that you start doing, but you must do it every day. As long as you can do it every day, it doesn't matter how much time you do. Then after some time it becomes a habit. I have, I have not used this to do anything, but I read that. But I believe it's true. It, it just makes intuitive sense for me. So whatever you want to do, if you really want to do it, you will do it. It's, uh, it's a question of... Uh, it's a question of whether you believe that you have to do it. And some people are, have to go to temple every morning. I know some, I have some friends in Gujaratis in Bombay, every morning they go to the temple. With the, the day doesn't start. They find the time for it. So I think it's a question of just getting habituated. What is important, you just habituate. I feel. Great, sir. All I can say is, uh, both uh, when you look at Mr. Chandra and Tara together, I think, for me at least, what I can think is, and what I'm written down here is, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's like an elephant which can dance, put together in a super app kind of format, and together with it, popular, big, yet very responsible. So thanks a lot, thanks for being here, and uh, helping us to navigate through many, many topics. And I would love everybody to give us a huge round of applause to Mr. Chandra. Thank you, Karan. Thank you. Thank you for being so graceful. You yourself are extremely accomplished. Thank so, you, actually, you should be doing the reverse interview. No, no, not at all. Sir. Thank I'm you so much. Learning a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you.